Hello and thanks for joining us here on France 24 for France in Focus. Coming to you from Rangis on the edge of Paris, the largest wholesale market in the world, supplying restaurants, shops and institutions, not just across France, but also much further afield with around one and a half million tons of fruit, vegetables, meat, seafood and cut flowers sold here every single year. In this edition, we'll examine the changing eating habits of the French consumer. We'll also try to guess what the food of the future might look like. The Rangis market has been in its present location since the late 1960s. Before that, it occupied part of the central Châtelet Léal marketplace, but its origins can be traced back to the 10th century. But back to the present day, the average European national consumes somewhere in the region of 60 kilos of meat every single year, but that number is falling. Let's take a look at some of the reasons why. Like mushrooms, they're popping up everywhere. More and more vegetarian restaurants are opening in France, especially in large cities. People come here to change up what they eat once in a while, and they find a real treat in these dishes. Wanting to eat healthier, concern for animal welfare, customers come for many reasons. I'm still not a total vegetarian yet. It's a gradual change, but psychologically the decision is made. It's done. And I think we should really keep in mind that we must respect nature and all that surrounds us. The French are now eating less meat at home as well. One out of two have decreased their consumption. So butchers and farmers have begun a charm offensive, with many opening their doors to visitors. I pour in all my love and all my passion, and when it's slaughtering time, I cry. But I know I brought something that was raised in clean conditions and with love. And when you explain all that to a consumer, and that's today's purpose, you show that passion and that you're doing it for the consumer, it makes a difference in the products that they'll buy. According to opinion polls, it's the price that explains this decline in meat consumption. Over the past 10 years, it's increased by 21 percent, and it's been beef sales that have been hardest hit. Cheaper meats such as pork and chicken have not seen their consumption decline. Animal welfare is another motivation for one out of three French people. Sometimes they have a distrust for a few weeks when they hear that something is said on TV, but that's all. Afterwards, they stop thinking about it. Regarding animal abuse, it, um, it makes me want to stop eating meat one day. OK, but wait till I'm retired. In recent months, examples of mistreatment and animals being slaughtered without being properly stunned were exposed by French animal welfare group L214. Since then, several slaughterhouses have been forced to close their doors and some farms have been forced to slaughter their animals after the authorities deem their breeding conditions inhumane. We cannot close our eyes. We ask the workers of slaughterhouses to kill animals for us, but to do it with empathy. We're asking them for the impossible. So now the professionals are turning to quality to attract consumers again, because some customers are willing to pay more for a better product, even if that means eating it less often. This butcher always goes to see the animals he will sell in a few weeks. I'd like to take a little tour, see if one catches my eye. Often the farmer will tell me, Frank, this one, you should wait two more weeks. This one here was born in 2003, so she's now 13 years old. And here you have a nice, round, tasty, fully grown meat. Knowing where food comes from, that, I think, is essential. Another factor has also curbed the French love of meat. A recent report by the WHO, the World Health Organization, argues that excessive meat consumption can cause cancer. 
There are two reasons not to eat too much meat. The first, there's a lot of fat and poor quality fat, saturated fats that clog arteries and cause cardiovascular diseases. The second is that recently we realized that overconsumption of protein could cause an increase of a substance called IGF-1, which stimulates the growth of tumor cells. The WHO recommends not eating more than 500 grams of red meat per week. The French consume 400 grams. But with just 3 percent of the population identifying as vegetarians, it has a ways to go before it becomes mainstream. Well, as we just saw in that report, French people's eating habits are changing and people are trying to become more aware of what they're eating and where it came from. And that's boosting the sales of products such as these in the organic section of the Rangis market. Well, newspapers and magazines offer all kinds of information on the alleged health benefits of eating in a certain way. And many of us have stopped eating certain foods based on something we've read. But as we're about to see in this next report, some people might be taking that a little too far. Coral lentils or trio? OK, coral it is. Lunchtime here at Elodie and Sebastian's flat. They're having a lentil salad with duck, tomatoes, feta and rice. A hundred percent organic meal with no cow's milk, no sugar and above all, no gluten. After doing some research, this couple chose to stop eating this group of proteins most often found in wheat, pasta and bread. Eating means respecting the laws of nature. It's about hunting and gathering and respecting a classic diet. You don't put petrol in a diesel car, you have to put in the right fuel. Your diet is the fuel you need to be able to function as you go about your day. For this couple, eating without gluten is not about following fashion or losing weight. They say it's purely a dietary choice. We want to focus on the quality of the product in our diets to give ourselves the best quality of life possible. The couple say they have better digestion, more energy and healthier skin through cutting out certain foods from their diet. This nutritionist, however, is more skeptical. There's no need for you to restrict your diet. It's an issue that Dr. Kokul faces every day. I always hear a lot about gluten and lactose-free diets. The nutritionist often finds himself having to disprove false rumors that patients have learned online. People are going to the internet more and more for information and viewpoints which are not always shared by those in the medical profession. There are lots of misconceptions around which are more to do with money than medical advice. Meanwhile, psychologist Patrick Deneau has written a book called Why Are We Afraid of the Stomach? It's his favorite subject to discuss over a decent lunch. Wine? Yes, please. According to him, the constant focus in the modern world on wellness and so-called clean eating is turning into an unhealthy obsession over healthy food, an obsession that doctors call orthorexia. There are orthorexics who don't eat fruit which have been picked more than 20 minutes before. Others only eat grains they can find on the ground. Eating becomes all about following orders, not choosing off a menu. Elodie and Sebastian don't see their non-gluten, non-lactose choice as following rules, but more as following their view that better eating leads to a better life. A reminder that outside food allergies, eating is above all a matter of choice. <laughs> well, whether it's for health reasons or because of the increasing scarcity of certain foodstuffs, we can be sure that our eating habits are going to continue to evolve over the decades. We're going to take a look forward now and try to predict what a meal of the future might look like. Just a word of warning, though, not all of these futuristic meals look very appetizing. This chemist is working on creating the food of the future. Take this orange peel, for instance. For him, it's much more than garbage. For a chemist, when you look at this, you tell yourself it's really a shame to throw this away. Because here you have essential oils, and underneath, in this white part, you have a natural gel called pectin. A simple distillation process is needed to extract this molecule capable of creating gelatin. And the result is a water-based liquid rich in calcium. Just like magic, after tossing a bit, it gives you an orange-flavored jam with no added sugar. 
a jelly that's already used by the famous French chef Thierry Marx. It adds a fresh touch to his chocolate citrus dessert. In the kitchen of his restaurant, naturally extracted gelatin has replaced industrial jelly and sugar. Industrial gelatin is usually made out of bones, and it made my cakes look more rigid. And here it's the fruit pectin that brings a light gel aspect. Orange is not the only fruit with gelling properties. Algae, too, abounds with extraordinary molecules. We managed to reconstruct a natural skin, just like the skin of a grape. On a greater scale, this skin-like material can serve as a plastic wrap. But what's even more impressive, it could be the can of the future. Much lighter, resistant and biodegradable, these cans have been tested at an altitude of 8,000 meters and could one day be used aboard space shuttles. Rethinking the way we cook is one thing, but for Professor Hervétis, the future of food lies in ChemLab creations. The so-called father of molecular gastronomy creates food from pure molecular compounds. Meat, what is it? It's 25% protein, 75% water. He mixes proteins with water, adds a bit of food coloring, vitamins, grease, and an aroma, and comes up with a new type of food. It should be sugary, right? It's crispy because of the crust, and then a taste of mushrooms. Hervétis doesn't want to replace the food we eat today, but instead he wants to expand our choice. And here are some of his molecular gastronomic dishes that you may one day enjoy in a restaurant. Well, that's it for this week's edition of France in Focus. Thank you very much for watching. Stay with us here on France 24.